Hello and welcome to Kane and Company. I'm David Kane here on the CBT Automotive Network. Today I've got the pleasure of being joined by the dealer principal of the Hayward Allen Motor Company and Hayward Allen Toyota in Athens, Georgia. And Steve Middlebrooks is the dealer principal. And Steve, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. And just as expected, when we get ready to do the interview, somebody needs to talk to the dealer. How about that? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah, no question. Steve, how in the heck did you get in the auto industry? Uh, well, what a, I'll make it as short as possible. When I was a senior at the University of Georgia, uh, my wife is from Athens, Georgia, and she was uh, good friends with the dealer's son. And he and I were friends, and uh, I rushed him in my fraternity and became to get to know one another. And and he asked if I would have an interest in uh, starting work at the dealership in this new um, uh, department called the business department, which was back in 1973 the F&I position. So I interviewed. I was offered the job, $800 a month and a new car to drive, and I could live on that the rest of my life. Awesome. Man, I'll tell you what, you probably did have bug eyes back then. And man, a new car, I, I, I probably have talked to a bunch of people in my days that said it was always the car that helped me to close this deal. So thank you very much for that, that comment. And I, I am just curious, were you the first of many people from Georgia that became employees, uh, or I guess the University of Georgia that became employees of the same company? Uh, yes, we've we've had uh, uh, we've had several. Of course, my son is now with the company, and he graduated from the University of Georgia. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, we we have several salespeople here at the Toyota store that uh, went to, went to Georgia also. So, Steve, I assumed since you're from the University of Georgia, Athens is right there next to the university. Are you finding that a good talent recruitment base to where you can bring uh, college? attendees, college students, college graduates into your dealership or into your business and be able to flourish better with people who have that kind of educational background? David, I would tell you more uh, of recent nature than in, than in years past because of the uh, advent of social media uh, and we're having, we're finding like the young lady that we have that's uh, in charge of our social media, obviously her degree uh, was an IT degree of the University of Georgia that gave her um, a, a leg up, and it sure was nice to have someone much younger than me uh, to head this up and stay ahead of the curve. And I love to read about anything and everything that's going on, especially the change that's out there. And you know about change more than anyone in uh, many years that you have uh, been in, you know, in charge of your your company. But um, no, it, it's it's been a it's been great to have this resource over there. I wish we'd love to use them even more than what we are currently using. You bet. Well, we have a lot in common. So my daughter started working with us a couple of years ago, and I've met your son Wes. I know he's very very active in the business. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to be in a family business in the automotive industry. David, uh, I have learned that uh, when I was uh, Pretty much, I'm a I'm a type AAA personality, which is unfortunate for my son. Uh, but at the same time, when I moved my office, my main office at the Toyota store, which we're only a quarter of a mile away from the, the General Motors Cadillac Buick GMC store, uh, I, I found that he could do much better without me than he could with me. Uh, now, <laughs> I obviously that. will uh, will uh, take a look at the, all the various reports each day and and the emails from the manufacturer and sales and how we're doing in the various departments. But uh, no, he does, he does an excellent job. He, his personality is totally different than mine. I'm more, uh, like I said, AAA personality and, he, and he's more analytical, if you will. So it's a good team. That's good. Well, it's nice to have that. I uh, was actually at the Kentucky ball game this past weekend with my father and got to enjoy that, except for the end result, of course. But it's so nice to be able to lean on a family member. And now I've got my daughter working with me. And, and it's just, there's just a comfort level. Well, it, it is. And, and it's fun. It can be challenging, uh, you know, when you have a family member in, in the business. But at the same time, 
uh, this is his desire. And it's not anything that I forced on him. And, and as we all know, uh, in any profession, if you enjoy what you do, it's more, it's, it's not at work per se. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the work that we're both in, which is helping the auto industry and more specifically you helping your company to work through changes that are occurring. And we, we just had a big election. Uh, you've, you've lived through several election cycles. You've lived through different government uh, involvement. Uh, you've lived through, uh, gosh, recalls. You've lived through commodity shortages. How long have you been in business and, and what are the challenges that you think are in front of us for 2017? David, um, I started in the business in 1973, so this is my 43rd year. And I would tell you, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm active in so many different things, and that's just my personality. I enjoy doing things, whether it be civic related to my church, through um, mentor programs at the University of Georgia, uh, Fellowship for Christian Athletes, I could go on and on. But two things that uh, I have been passionate about in our industry is serving on the board of directors for the Georgia Automobile Dealers Association. And more recently, which uh, you can easily relate to uh, as being elected on the National Automobile Dealers Association, which your father just was an icon with, with, uh, within ADA. Uh, and, and continuing uh, to answer your question, uh, it has been an eye opener to, to see the local and state um, uh, issues that confront us, but looking more on the national basis, like you know, we were attending a meeting in Palm Springs uh, a month, month and a half ago, and just the CFPB uh, and uh, and how that's affecting our our industry, um, the uh, EPA and 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 their their mandates by the year 2025. Um, when you when you try to run a business on a day-to-day -day basis and then you look and see some of the uh, uh, I, I hate to say strangleholds but they're somewhat that's what they are uh, I would hopefully say that they have good intentions but uh, when it look like when it's going to uh, affect our our industry as well as the consumer and the, the cost of course the consumer uh, that's concerning uh, so yeah, you know, that's that's a huge issue there. Yeah, I would imagine, and you know, I, I like how you put it because uh, these actually government people are our customers, so we we know they have good intentions, and I think to a large degree the NADA's role is to help educate and to uh, do a, a pathway into the right offices, and I know that each year the NADA does an outreach to where you all literally will go to Capitol Hill. Uh, in Washington, but also on a local level uh, with your state government and the GADA invites legislators in. And, and these are business people. They, they run businesses and in other industries just as you do. So at least on a local level, they're not professional politicians, although they may behave like that sometimes. But how important is that, uh, that governmental outreach that you've achieved with the GADA and what you're going to be doing with the NADA? Well, it's critical, and so often, and it's like a real, any kind of relationship, David, this relationship with your spouse, with a coworker, with a customer, if you don't have good communication, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to know what the other party is thinking. And, you know, for, I'll get on a brief tangent here, but in the state of Georgia, we ca pa passed a casual sales tax uh, a year and a half ago, and the intent of that uh, bill was strictly to charge a casual sale from you know uh, this individual to that individual. Well, on the eleventh hour, they added another two items in there. One of which was to tax the leases uh, up front, the entire cost of the car. So now we have a situation where uh, we are charging the customer, any dealer in the state of Georgia, you're charging the customer for the full value of that car. So that, you know, it raises a uh, $40,000 car, it raises a payment $75 a month. You take a Lexus or Mercedes, it relates, it increases it $150 a month. Well, what's happened is our leases have gone down to 6%, whereas the national average is anywhere from 20 to 30%. So that's more on the state level. Uh, in the national level, I just alluded to the CFPB as one item. Uh, another thing is 
I mentioned the industry relations. I mean, we, we love Toyota, we love GM and so forth, but you know, I'm sitting there talking and listening to other Nissan dealers, Mercedes dealers, Audi dealers and so forth. And uh, you know, you, you scratch your head and you wonder if we're on the same team. Yeah, I would imagine. Well, here's what's interesting, and I don't know if dealers realize this, that uh, your salary to be a member of the NADA or GADA is uh, really meager, as in fact it's zero. So you all are literally giving your time to go represent dealers. And, and I, I would imagine, based on the fact that you've had five phone calls and maybe several more since we started talking that you might have muted, uh, you've got other things you could be doing just in your own business. So what drives a dealer to give to the industry like you're doing? Well, it's, uh, it's like, what do we want for the future of our children and our grandchildren? Well, in a, in a way, that's kind of like it is in the, in the car business. You know, I would like for, for the auto industry, uh, which hopefully my son and possibly my grandchildren would want to be involved in it, I would hope that there would be some stability uh, in the franchise automobile system. We know there's going to be change. We know that. But hopefully the, the change will be something that's tolerable uh, and that would cause the franchise system to uh, continue you know, for years to come. Uh, I, I will lead into the fact, uh, David, that at our last meeting, uh, the NADA um, uh, hired a consulting company to come in and do a a very in-depth study of the auto industry with the, the the focus on where are we going to be in the year 2025. And we got a, a hour and a half snapshot uh, uh, from the, uh, the head consultant as to where we're going to be there. And the full uh, uh, viewing of this will be at NADA in January. Uh, and it was, um, it was somewhat revealing. Uh, it was, um, uh, you know, it was pro-franchise, if you will, but we also have to know that, that we're going to have to deal with the, the Teslas of the world, the, you know, Uber, um, you know, federal regulations, uh, you know, insurance uh, is another component. You know, I'm, I'm, we got my insurance uh, renewal. Well, you know, with the losses that are going on with hurricanes and so forth, all that affects us and sure. uh, it affects our cost. Oh, there's no question. Well, Steve... You've been a real gift to uh, our audience today to share such great insights. Dealers today, if, if you want to get involved, they just need to come to some GADA meetings or their, their local state association meetings, uh, attend NADA, go to the meetings, and, and just get involved. I think there's plenty of seats for volunteers in these organizations. Well, uh, you know, we've got some great dealers out there. I mean, the hardworking, and uh, uh, I have learned to appreciate so many of them that give up their time. And uh, there's there's some some dealers that are, sit back and don't see the value until something is taken away. Yeah, there's no question. Well, so just to uh, let you close out on a on a high here, uh, I'd like to get you to prognosticate this TCU Georgia bowl game coming up. Uh, should we count this in the victory column for the Bulldogs? I, I'm uh, cautiously optimistic. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll do well. We'll put a W and uh, just look for us over the next couple of years. And I'm, I'm not no pie in the sky, <laughs> but I, I really feel good about the direction that Kirby has uh, our program going. Excellent. That sounds great. Steve, thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you, audience, for joining me and taking the time to listen to the wise uh, words by Steve Middlebrooks, the dealer principal at Hayward Allen Auto Group. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time here on Kane & Company.